So if you want to program in C Sharp and or Python, it's important to understand their syntax. But first off, what is syntax? Well, syntax in relation to programming is pretty much a set of rules that must be followed, an order of operation that your code must abide by, a process that must be respected if you want your program to run. And so today, we're going to look at the syntax for two different languages and see the differences between them, because I think it could be really helpful for you to see how they compare and contrast. And plus, you'll pretty much learn two languages at once. And so on the left is the language C Sharp using the IDE Visual Studio, which should interest you if you do any Windows development or want to make games using a popular game engine called Unity. And on the right is the language Python 3 using the IDE Visual Studio Code, which should interest you if you want to get into general programming or data science. Alright, so here I have two brand new console projects, and if you don't know how to make a new console project in either C Sharp or Python or both, be sure to check out the video in the description. Uh, it's called How to Install an IDE, and at the end of that video I'll show you how to do that. All right, so the first thing I wanna look at today is how both languages go about utilizing data types. Now, data types by themselves are useless. You have to assign a data type to a variable. Now, to get started in C Sharp over here on the left, I'm just gonna get rid of these two lines because I no longer need them. They come stock with every new project. Uh, and then we're gonna use a Boolean as our example today. Now, a Boolean is a type of data that can only be one of two types. It's either true or it's false. So let's initialize a Boolean in C-sharp. Uh, let's call it do it, and then we're gonna assign um, true to it. So do it equals true. Now this is all great and all, do it is a Boolean that we assign to be true. However, C-sharp will not recognize it as a Boolean unless you cast its data type. And in C-sharp, you simply cast the data type by going before the variable, which again, our variable is the do it, before it, you just type whatever the data type is. So this is bool, which is short for Boolean. Bool do it equals true. See our error goes away and everything checks out. And this very syntax goes for every variable. For example, if you wanna initialize a string variable, you have to cast it. So I'm gonna say this is a string. I'm gonna call it str, short for string. And then I'm gonna assign um, hello to it, for example. You have to do this for every single variable. However, there's a bit of a catch. So I'm just gonna get rid of this line because I don't need it anymore. Uh, you only have to initialize your variables on their first use. So like if I wanted to change the do it boolean uh, variable, I just have to come down here and I can just do do it equals false, for example. And that's because when, on this line right here, uh, the program knows what the data type for the do it variable is. It knows that it's a bool, so I don't have to do it again. In fact, if I try and do it again, you'll see that I get an error. This error is pretty much just telling me that like I can't create the same variable twice, essentially. So just remember, you only have to initialize on the first use, and this convention is for every single data type. That's booleans, that's strings, that's integers, that's floats, every single one. Now over in Python, things are a lot different. So let's say we want to do the same example. We just want to initialize a Boolean variable. Well, in Python, all you have to do is just write the name of your variable and then assign whatever value you want to it. So in this case, we're going to assign true to it. And there we go. We just initialize a Boolean variable. That's right, in Python, you don't have to cast your variables. You don't have to cast the data type of what you want your variable to be like you do in C-sharp. And this benefit comes from the fact that Python is what's called an interpreted language. And what that means is all you have to do is create a variable and then assign some value to it. And depending on what value you assign to your variable, Python will interpret what type of data type that variable should have. And with this syntax, it enables a lot of flexibility with the Python language. It's one of the reasons why so many people love Python, because it's kind of like a breath of fresh air uh, as far as computer languages are concerned. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of developers that are into data science would not use Python, because as you can see, you can save a lot of time not having to type you know, the, the data type over and over and over for your variables. However, the flexibility doesn't stop there. Uh, I'm going to simply print out what do it equals uh, like so save it hit the play button and you'll see that do it equals true obviously that's what you expected but check this out if we want to reassign it to be false for example we just come down and say do it equals false 
save it, hit the play button, and we have a false value. But this is where it gets really cool. So currently, as you understand it, do it is a Boolean variable, but we can do do it equals um, 13,037, for example. So first we assign true, and then we change the mind, assign the false, and then we change the mind again, and assign it to 1337. When I hit play, no errors, it just prints out that it's 1337, the last thing we assigned it to, which is crazy flexibility. Over in C Sharp, we simply cannot do that. If we wanted to change the do it to be a um, like an integer, for example, we're simply just going to get an error saying that you know you cannot convert uh, an integer into a bool. Once that variable has its data type, it cannot be changed. And this is probably one of the biggest differences between C Sharp and Python uh, at the fact that how they go about casting their data types. Next, I want to get into command terminations and the differences between C Sharp and Python. First things first, what is a command? Well, for example, this bit of code here is a command. And what it's saying is take our do it variable and assign a false value to it. Same with up here, take our do it variable, assign a true value to it, and also cast it as a Boolean. These are examples of commands. So on a very low level, the way a computer works is that it needs to know when these commands begin and end so it knows what it needs to process. And so that is where a command termination comes into play. We need something to be able to separate all these different commands. And in C Sharp, the command termination is a semicolon. These semicolons right here is what you have to add to the end of every single command to be able to tell the computer that, hey, this command is over, you can process this before you process the next one. I'm grossly simplifying it, but that's how it works on a higher level. And so with that, in C Sharp, so long as you have a semicolon separating your previous command from your next one, you can place your commands anywhere you want. For example, I can move this, this command right here to be right after the previous command. Uh, no errors, no issues. I can put it back on the next line and hit tab a bunch of times. No issues, no errors. You have a lot of flexibility using the uh, semicolon as a command termination. C Sharp has a lot of flexibility in this regard using the semicolon as a command termination. Now over in Python, they differ here a lot as well. So you might look at C Sharp and see, okay, semicolon, that makes sense as a command termination, but Python, what? How do they do that? Well, the answer is quite simple, actually. Instead of using semicolons, they just use a line break. So if you want to separate two commands, you just put it on a new line. Easy as that. In fact, to demonstrate, we can't do what we did over here in C Sharp. If we were to put these right next to each other and then save it, you'll see that in the problems tab, it says that we have invalid syntax because you can't, it doesn't know what's going on here. Why is there a, a value and a variable after an assignment? It just doesn't understand. How? Ever. <laughs> Python kind of thought of all the stops. Um, you can simply just add a semicolon and voila, it will now act as a command termination. In fact, just to prove that it does what I say it does, I'm going to bring them all in the same line to command terminations and then I'm going to press play and show you that it runs. It prints out 1337. So yeah, in this regard, this makes Python really, really flexible because you can use semicolons if you want to. However, you'll find that most developers don't because it's often a lot faster to just use the new line uh, command termination instead of the semicolons. And allow me to demonstrate that. So I'm just gonna restore both scripts to back how they were. This is a new line. This is a new line. This, uh, I'm just gonna do this. Um, all right, so now they're back to they're back restored. So the reason why you can save a lot of time is because if you look at the two different scripts, they kind of both just use a new line termination anyway. Uh, even if you were to look at more complex C sharp script, oftentimes you'll find that over ninety percent of a C sharp script is going to use like a new line as a command termination anyway. So you're actually saving a lot of time without having to type, you know, semicolon, semicolon semicolon and you'll see that it turns red in this context because it's letting you know that it, it's pretty much useless like we know that you want to terminate this command by going to new line and then if we were to hit a backspace see it turns white because like okay now it's in use we understand what you're trying to do here but 
please note, this is a feature that comes with the Visual Studio Code IDE. So take that information as you want, but do know that most Python developers will probably look at you sideways if they see any semicolons in your, in your code. So yeah, there are a couple of uh, syntax differences there. Next, I wanna go over how they differ in code blocking. So first question, what is code blocking? Well, I'm gonna come over here in C Sharp and give you a quick example. First and foremost, the way that you indicate a block of code is you use these braces. Anything that goes inside of these braces is a block of code. So the general syntax, you don't have to follow this, but most developers will put a block of code, one line in the middle is all the code that will be ran within that block of code, and then a brace at the end. And so here we can like just move our do it equals false into here, for example. And of course, get rid of this one because we don't need it. And just like that, we have a block of code in C Sharp. However, a block of code like this is pretty useless to add because it's gonna be ran regardless. However, what blocking off code allows you to do is you can add things like, for example, an if statement. So we can say, if do it, um, then set do it to equals false. And this block of code will only run if do it equals true. And I wanna prove this to you. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna write console dot right line this is just going to print anything that we want to the console and i'm going to say checking and then i'm going to come down here and then do it again i'm going to say console dot right oh wait what is that console dot right line there we go um i'm just going to set to false right and then at the end we need a console dot read key this just makes sure that the terminal does not close when we hit the start button which is up here and I'm gonna press boom uh, terminals off screen I'm gonna bring it up and there we go you see that it goes checking and then it sets it to false but you are not convinced because we blocked out this code and it still ran so I'm gonna change do it to equals false and watch what happens when I hit the start button and bring the terminal over here. It just uh, says checking because again, uh, do it equals false. And we said if do it, which is another way of saying if do it equals true, then run this block of code. And at the fact that uh, do it equals false, this block of code is never ran. And that's code blocking. You'll find that code blocking is very important and very useful for all things programming. Um, but that's how you do it in C Sharp. Now over in Python, it's again a lot different. I'm just gonna get rid of these two lines just to make it a lot less confusing. And so everything under the condition and indented will be counted as that block of code. All right, now I'm gonna run that and you will see that we get checking set to false. And then we also had an extra print down here uh, that I'll remove next time, but <laughs> that also prints out false as well. And again, you're not convinced because this block of code was ran anyway. So we're gonna set this value to be false. And then I'm also gonna remove this just so that it's not confusing when it prints. And then save, hit play, and only checking. And so that is how you do code blocking in Python. And so, as you can see, code blocking is another syntax that C Sharp and Python have a lot of differences between. But it's very important to know how to code block in both languages because you'll be using it quite a lot for for loops, for if statements, for methods, functions, all types of stuff. And the very last thing that I wanna go over today is what's called variable scoping. So, what is variable scoping? Well, with the introduction to code blocking, that's this right here, a block of code, remember. This is a block of code as well. Well, more right here, this is a block of code. But with the introduction to these blocks of code, now you have to worry about the scope of your variables. So let me give you a quick example. So let's say inside of this block of code here, we want to initialize a new variable. Let's initialize, uh, just let's do an integer. We'll call it a just for an example, and then we'll assign a zero value to it, right? Well, because we initialize this integer variable within this block of code, it cannot be used outside of this block of code. And to demonstrate, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do outside of the block of code, console dot right line oops right line 
a for example and you can see what happens is it says that this variable does not exist what do you mean it doesn't exist though we initialized it here well again like i said this variable because we initialized it within this block of code cannot leave this block of code if we wanted to leave this block of code we have to do it like this we come out here oops we come out here and we initialize int a equals let's just say five for example and then inside of this block of code we just change we just reassign it back to zero uh, so because it's it's initialized within this block of code which is our main function we can use it outside of this block of code and that is variable scoping in a nutshell now over in C sharp this syntax is no different so if we were to come inside this block of code and initialize an a assign a zero to that and then come outside of this block of code and try and print that a variable you'll see that when we save and hit the play button that we get an error syntax error saying that this a the variable a is not defined and again if we want to get around this we have to change the scope of the a variable so come out to the regular indentation and just do a equals five for example and then when we get into this scope we're simply just going to reassign it change it to zero and then we'll be able to print it and to prove that i hit save and then i hit play and there you go checking five and again just want to make sure i cover all bases the reason why this prints out checking five is because we said do it to equals false and if do it is true then this block of code will be ran but because do it is false this block of code is not ran so it just skips this entire thing and it just prints out five which is what we assign a to and that's pretty much it that is everything that you need to know to start programming in regards to the syntax and so in conclusion, even though C Sharp and Python have differences in their syntax, as you can see, the differences are small enough to be able to remember the important stuff. You have to cast data types in C Sharp, Python you do not. In C Sharp you must use semicolons to terminate commands, Python uses new line breaks. And C Sharp uses curly braces for code blocking, while Python uses indentation. Of course, there are more differences in their syntax, but these are the major differences that often confuse new developers.